where news comes first. This is WECT News at Midday, streaming live on WECT.com and the WECT News app. Good Thursday morning. Good morning. Nice of me to show up. Good Thursday <laughs> afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I'm Bob Bonner. No wonder you think the day is I know it's dragging, dragging on. <laughs> I'm Kim Rycliffe, and you may notice something very different, something missing from the Azalea Festival this year. The circus isn't coming to town. This story is new at noon, but has many of you already commenting on Facebook. The Cole Brothers Circus announced circus this morning it will not be part of the North Carolina Azalea Festival in April. No specific reason was given, but we're told the circus won't be traveling anywhere this year. The circus has been part of the Azalea Festival for more than 30 years. Also new at noon, a research vessel built by local students has been found 6,000 miles away. A father and son found the Marlin Spike and Miller off the coast of Ireland. They were able to kayak out and bring it back. Now, this is one of two unmanned sailboats Cape Fear Community College students launched to monitor the ocean and wind currents. We can show you some of the pictures of the students launching this boat. They did it back in June. The school working with a marine institute in Ireland to relaunch the boat. The other research sailboat was lost. We have new details on a fatal car wreck. We've learned in the last hour, Caleb Smith is the name of the 13 year old boy who died. He is from Calabash. Caleb was in a car with two other teens when they hit a bridge, then went into a creek. That wreck happened on Bridger Road in Shalote. Justice and Devin Harris survived the accident. They are expected to fully recover and troopers are working to determine whether any charges will be filed. We also have new details on a man arrested in a gang related shooting. Meredith Cromarty is back in Bladen County now and in jail under a two and a half million dollar bond. U.S. Marshals picked Cromarty up in Fayetteville yesterday. He now faces several charges, including five counts of attempted murder. Cromarty is accused of shooting at a rival gang member, but hitting a car with four people, including an infant inside. No one got hurt. Many of you have signed petitions opposing offshore drilling and seismic testing. Well, now local environmentalists are taking the fight to the nation's capital. Board members of the Surfrider Foundation, Cape Fear Chapter, and business owner Mar uh, Mary Baggett are on their way to Washington. They plan to meet with North Carolina Senators Richard Burr and Tom Tillis, as well as Congressman David Rouser. Studies have shown that there's only six months of oil out here. Six months of oil to supply the United States. So we're going to go through this whole process of harming marine life, potentially polluting the environment for six months of oil. So that, that, that's the reason we're opposed to it. Now, the organization plans to present letters signed by over a thousand businesses to the White House next week, asking to cancel plans for oil drilling in the Atlantic. Traffic should be running smoothly again after ice shut down part of a busy road this morning. DOT crews had to dump salt all over the road at the intersection of Carolina Beach Road and 3rd Street in Wilmington. Some water on the road froze at the cold temperatures overnight. There were at least one accident and a couple drivers reported their cars spinning on the ice. DOT crews say they have plenty of salt and brine if they need it again tomorrow. Something, of course, Gannon is keeping a very close eye on this afternoon. Yeah, that's right. We do have a system on the way for tomorrow. Could bring some wet and even briefly wintry weather to portions of southeastern North Carolina. Perhaps a more pronounced period of some of that wintry weather just to our north in northeastern North Carolina. This afternoon, we're working on temperatures chilly but above freezing and miles ahead of where we were at daybreak. Widespread 20s at daybreak this morning as expected. Now it's upper 30s and lower 40s for the rest of your Thursday. Only about low and mid 40s is all we can ask for under sunny or mostly sunny skies. Hey, that's a positive. Let's fast forward to tomorrow where your Carolina view temperature and future radar model gets active after 7, 8 o'clock. Have some showers blossoming with a low pressure system. Could be involved with some mixed precipitation, maybe some pure snow for northeastern North Carolina. For us, a chilly and damp day. I showed you that real quick. What we're going to do is bear down, get closer into southeastern North Carolina, and take you hour by hour in a more purposeful, incremented way. That's in the full forecast. We'll also do the seven day coming up in a few minutes. Back to you. All right, Gannon, thanks. And here's a heartwarming story for you. Do you see this? Well, this is a dog hiding very scared behind a speaker because the house he's in is on fire. Now, we don't have to worry, though. This new helmet cam footage shows firefighters rescuing the dog from the home in Sacramento. The family made it out safe as well. When firefighters got to this house, though, it was fully engulfed in flames. Fire officials say a working smoke detector played a big role in getting everyone to safety. The cause of the fire is under investigation. The dog and its owner were reunited. After 41 days, the occupation of a national wildlife refuge in Oregon may be coming to a close. 
Kyla Boshi reporting this afternoon. The last four protesters said they will surrender today. The standoff in Oregon could be in its final hours. The last remaining armed occupiers say they intend to turn themselves in later on this morning. Behind me, you see one of several roadblocks leading to the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge in eastern Oregon. So far, it's been relatively quiet this morning. The final four remaining occupiers said during a live stream conference call last night they were prepared to leave. Nevada lawmaker Michelle Fiore, evangelist Franklin Graham, and Ammon Bundy's lawyers are expected to meet the protesters at the FBI checkpoint at 8 o'clock Pacific time this morning, where the occupiers will turn themselves in. Tensions were high last night after the FBI surrounded the occupiers' campsite. Federal agents say one of the protesters went outside of the barricade. Important to note, no shots were fired. Today marks day 41 of the occupation. And again, expectation is it could be over. The occupiers intend to turn themselves in this morning. Near Burns, Oregon, Kyle Aboshi, NBC News. A judge has delayed Dylan Roof's trial because the Justice Department has not decided whether it will seek the death penalty. During a court appearance just this morning, Roof's defense attorneys said Roof will plead guilty if the death penalty is taken off the table. Roof faces nine counts of murder, three attempted murder counts after shooting spree inside Emanuel AME Church in Charleston. Roof's state death penalty trial is scheduled for July the 11th. Checking out your midday stocks, a lot of activity on the downside. The stock market down a lot right now, especially the Dow Jones. Looking at the NASDAQ as well and the S&P 500, all down quite a bit.